Hi, everyone. I'm here today with Rob Henderson. Rob, how are you doing? Good, Richard. How are you? Uh, I'm doing great. So today we're going to talk about uh, the show called The Chair. And neither when we uh, came across this show, it's on Netflix. It's six episodes. It's 30 minutes each. Uh, you know, we, we weren't enamored by the trailer. It's not like we were jumping out of our seats to, to watch this. Uh, no, Richard, you sent me the trailer and I was like, this looks so dumb. Like, yeah. But but then I, I, I think I like you, you know, we, we, we see a lot of people talking about it on Twitter and a lot of academics were tweeting about it and so on. And I, I came around and figured, you know, if everyone's watching the show, if academics and PhD students and everyone, they're interested. So why not? Why not see what it's about? Yeah. And so the people I saw, I saw Jennifer Doliak, uh, who's a mutual. She's like a famous woman in criminology. I don't, I don't remember exactly where she's a professor. I think somewhere, I think uh, maybe Austin. And uh, Larry Summers, what that was, I think, the biggest oh, name yeah. who praised it. <laughs> Have you seen anyone well, else praise it? Uh, there's a um, lot of people that are really famous. I saw Robin Hansen posted something like, something like, you know, oh, the chair is okay, but it doesn't, uh, like most academic shows, it doesn't show the, the process of, of what research is like. Yeah, I saw um, that too, right? yeah. So he was another sort of notable name, but but yeah, just in general, I see a lot of people like talking about you know cr- critiquing everything from from what the offices look like to the way the academics interact with each other. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, because I guess probably because we follow academics, so we see a lot of. I mean, I I read into it just I think Netflix Netflix just sort of forces these shows upon you and says you know <laughs> so you know maybe you like this. Well, the, the algorithm has you know they have they, they know more about you than you know about yourself, so they already know. Oh, your PhD, you know, you're you're mm. uh, spending a lot of time on Twitter, so let's let's uh, let's do some targeted marketing to to people like Richard <laughs> and Robert. You know, they have well, they have like the like the top watch shows in the country. So there's some stuff that I think everyone gets. I think this might have been one of those things that they you know they gave to everybody. I don't I don't I, I don't know if I saw it. Well, as no, it's different. Like I, I've seen. I mean, I don't know like how how nuanced and intricate this this is, but I've seen um, people who go on Netflix on their own account and uh-huh. look at like the the image of a movie, uh, like the trailer in the this the image of the movie, and then. And then they'll go to someone else and the same movie, uh, it looks different. It will like, it'll show a different star. So if you watch, I don't like Titanic, for example, I'll, you know, something easy. Uh, one person will see like this big image of Leonardo DiCaprio's face. And yeah. then if they open Titanic on another person's Netflix account, it'll just be Kate Winslet. Uh-huh. And it's sort of like based on she your like demographic information, what they know about you. Like they, they get to decide sort of what they're going to show you based on what information they have about you. So yeah. I wonder, you know, like the chair, if that was sort of, uh, if, they, if they found a way to, to market this. Well, they have a thing academics. like trending, and I don't know if that's just, for, well, I think, I think I thought the trending thing was a, uh, was a, um, a universal thing. Mm-hmm. Um, that's what, that's what I thought. But maybe that, you know, trending, like your Twitter trending is obviously based on your individual characteristics. But anyways, we, you know, mm-hmm. we think everyone is watching it, and I guess everyone, <laughs> like who we know, thinks everyone is watching it, so uh, we can proceed on that basis. So, you know, this show is like, okay, so it's, it's a chairwoman. Uh, that's why it's called the chair. She's Sandra O, oh, uh, and she's the head of an English department at this university called Penbrook, which they mentioned at one point is a lower I- ivory, right? Lower tier ivy, yeah. Yeah. And so, you know, it's, it's something like that. And then the, um, and then like, you know, she's got, she has this like sort of uh, like, uh, like flirtatious, you know, like sort of romantic, not romantic with this guy named Bill, who's an English professor in her department. Uh, And uh, so that's, that's the, that's like, I think the main story. And she's trying to run this department. Um, The English department, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, So she's running the English department and I guess she was she was newly promoted to be the chair. She's right. the she's the first uh, the first woman of color to be a chair in this department, which I found that interesting. So the Netflix description, you know, oh, uh, Jai Yoon Kim has recently been promoted as the first woman of color to chair, blah blah. blah. And I, I remember reading that, and I was thinking to myself, like, okay, so you know, she's you know, based on the name, I'm assuming she's she's Korean. Yeah. Uh, so if you're if you're an Asian woman, uh, you're considered a, a woman of color. No, of course. Uh, which which does this does this settle the debate? You know, is Netflix attempting to settle the debate about whether Asians are are people of color or uh, white adjacents? No, nobody uh, denies are people of color. Well, it's funny because the politics of this are very modern, so you could you could look at this right, and so uh, and so so like the subtext, uh, and you know, did you like first? Did you like this show? No. <laughs> No. Okay. Me neither. I, I, I liked. I liked that. I didn't like. I mean, I, I hate watched it, and it was it was pleasurable from that perspective. But yeah. on, on its own, it's it's a bad show. 
yeah, I, I don't know if people say this, but it's a cringe watch for me. I, li- I like to say cringe watch because that's how I feel while watching it. And the sort of the storyline is there's this like, you know, romantic, semi romantic relationship. And, oh, the Asian woman, is, uh, uh, what's her name? Juwin or something. I call her Sen- Sendro. Jayun and Kim. Yeah. Jayun. Jayun. She has a uh, daughter uh, that she adopted uh, who's Mexican. Juju. Yeah. And she teaches her about her Mexican culture. Right. That's mm-hmm. also something that's going on. And the girl has like sort of like uh, she's like, hey, has your behavioral problems? I don't know. She's like eight years old. But like the, the you know, the funny thing, the background is you know, there's these old white people in the department. Right. These these two old white guys who are like falling asleep and like drooling on themselves. Uh, and then there's this old white woman and there's um, there's uh, the, the Korean chairwoman. And then there's a black woman named Yasmin who is yes. like up and, yeah. up and coming scholar. Going right. up for tenure soon or something, right? Yeah. Like, it's, it's, so, it's, so Jayun is trying to like shepherd her into you know becoming a you know a sort of established scholar in in their right. department. So what, what is, so, so this is so it's the way it starts is she like she uh, this black woman is her classrooms are just full because everyone wants to take her classes because she's new and exciting and there's this old white professor who's just like droning God and like you know nobody's enrolling in his class. Moby right? Dick. Yeah, he's he's teaching. Like he's teaching. Moby Dick. Yeah, and then the uh, and then they combine their classes to like help the old guy out, right? Uh, to, to send him more students, so more students will listen to his, you know, his 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 long long winded lectures. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> And, and it's funny seeing, so there's this one scene i like this is my this is my favorite thing so when the classes are combined he's he's lecturing on the old guys lecturing on moby dick and he goes um you know he's talking about some letter that uh, uh moby dick sent to some guy or moby dick herman melville sent to some guy and then there's a black uh student who like raises his hands like well wasn't uh, melville a wife beater and he's like, well, some feminists have posited that, but um, mm-hmm. I think we should just focus on his work in this class. He's like, oh, but you just talked about a letter that he sent. What about that? Mm-hmm. And then, like, the professor gives an explanation. All the students are like, oh man, no, no. It's like it's like they they they're like they've seen through his like white male way. Of yeah, teaching. yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the black woman comes in and she's like, when we you know when we go over it in my part of the class, uh, we'll talk about uh, we'll talk about that and the important. Women in his life too, and then they're all like, oh, "The important women." <laughs> the only thing that scene was missing, I mean, so yeah, like you've probably seen this. You know, the only thing that scene was missing was the finger snapping. You know, a lot of a lot of undergrads at these top right. universities, when they when they approve something, when they want to validate you, they'll do the finger snaps. Yeah, and I was waiting for that. You know, I was waiting for this. You know, this lower tier IV these students uh, to to start snapping their fingers and enjoy uh, at the idea of sort of talking about how Herman Melville was this evil, you know, evil white man who who was a wife beater. And, you know, who cares? Who cares that he wrote this like a great piece of literature? Let's focus on on his personal foibles. Yeah. Yeah. And well, that's, that brings, you know, brings up something else that's interesting, which is that they, uh, there's not like overwhelming aggression to the old white people. Like they're just dinosaurs and they're sort of sad and they need to go away. And the, the, the old white guy, what would you remember the old professor's name? I, I don't, but I know who you're talking about, right? Yeah. Like the, the glasses. Yeah. 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 And so he's trying to sabotage the, uh, so he said he got her tenure file. And like, uh, yes, the yes, woman comes fun. in, and she's like, you know, you should be sending to people who uh, who are uh, well versed in feminism and critical race theory. And yeah. then he's like, and then he's like, you know, they w- it will be judged fairly by you know, uh, you know, by qualified scholars or something. So like, he's not mm-hmm. taking her literature seriously because it's you know, feminism, critical race theory, and so this is like another thing. Um, and yeah. You know, so that part kind of rang true, the sort of old guard and like these up and coming scholars and how they have these disagreements about how these classes should be taught. But you have this point that actually like most English departments aren't even teaching that kind of, like they're not teaching that way anymore. Right. Like, you know, in the show they're mentioning like Jane Austen and Chaucer and all these yeah. sort of like luminaries of the Western canon. And really, it's like, I guess today, isn't it? English departments, they're, they're focused much more on sort of like what like deconstruction and critical theory and like Freudianism, Marxism. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 when I was an undergrad at Yale, like, you know, the only, the only person in the English or the humanity side that, that uh, like taught in that sort of like, I guess, old school literary tradition was Harold Bloom. And he was like uh. 93 years old or something. Like he was very old uh, when I was an undergrad there. And yeah, it, yeah it's just, it's not really like English is not the way that it's portrayed in, in the show, I think was one of your points. 
Right. Yeah, I think that's right. I'm not 100%. I mean, I had, last time I took an English college course was like, you know, like 15 years ago. But there was, uh, yeah, we read Virginia Woolf. Uh, I'm trying to, did we read Jane Austen? It was a, we, I think we, did we read Jane Austen? I just remember Virginia Woolf. That's all I remember. Um, so that's, you know, a real author. Uh, yeah, who knows? That was a long time ago. <laughs> yeah, we didn't hear much about like, yeah, they didn't name drop any sort of like, like currently trendy authors, yeah, exactly. right? There's like, no, uh, you know, like, there's no, uh, you know, Abraham uh, X. Kendi or yeah, whatever. I don't, I don't who, yeah, I don't know who the trend, like young, like, uh, young adult fiction is like really, um, crazy. You know, they're always canceling yeah. each other and going through these witch hunts and, uh, <laughs> And yeah, there's nothing like that, you know, whatever adult fiction, whatever, uh, that people are reading. Yeah. And so, so there's that, but, but like, but, but they are like teaching it in a way. So the the other, the other, the cringe scene, the the cringiest scene, even more than that other one was when they were like, he, so the old man is sitting in the back of the lecture and she, and she's teaching Moby Dick her way. And they're like playing the piano and they're rapping and they're dancing. Oh, like the sort of Hamilton interpretation. Yeah, Hamilton like version of, and and like they have a chorus is like, no women on board, no women on board. Like you know, they're in the ocean, they got no women on board. It's just, and the the old professor is like watching it, like horrified, right? But the yeah. point well, is, like, what do you think? Like that scene was interesting because, so so like you said, the show is like takes this sort of moderate political approach, and so that scene, it was unclear, at least to me, it was unclear whether the creators of the show meant for this to be like. Like, like what, what position or what stance did the show take on that scene? Was it like, was it like lamenting the way that whatever teaching in universities uh, have declined? And this is, this isn't like not the only way you can keep the attention of young undergrads is by doing this sort of like, you know, turning, turning old literature into hip hop and, and these kind of musicals like Hamilton did. Is it, um, you know, or, or is it saying like, look how cool this is that, that young yeah. kids are able to do this. Like whose side are they taking? Are they taking the old professor's side? Are they taking the student side? Or is it both to where like, whoever the viewer is, you can find, you can find a, a way for the show to agree with your, your sort of presuppositions about the state of the university today. Um, one of the things I found interesting, and I guess like, you know, this is sort of later in the show was uh, what, like the controversy with Bill, right? Like the Nazi salute and, yeah. you know, getting into trouble and everything. And like, even then, like the show sort of like takes this moderate approach of like, on the one hand, it makes Bill look sympathetic, but it also like, tries to make the students look sympathetic too. And um, I mean, I think this is like the Bill character, I think could only have been made like in the post Trump era, otherwise they would have had to like put something in the show indicating that Bill was a liberal, right? Like, mm-hmm. like made it very clear that Bill uh, is, is on the right political team and he just happened to have made a mistake. Uh, and, and yes. Yeah, so, and so, yeah, like I was curious, like, what, what, do, you, what do you think about this? Like well, the, the Bill I, character I, in that I, controversy? Yeah. yeah. I thought, I thought it was a moderate show, but I don't think it was open interpretation. I, I think it was pretty clear that in the first case, uh, you're supposed to take the side of the rappers. This is Hamilton centrism. It's like, we teach the same thing. It's still like the founding fathers. It's still Herman Melville, but it's rapping and it's like people of color doing it. And that's like, you know, something establishment, moderate liberal sort of love. So mm-hmm. I, and in that whole relationship between Yasmin and the old white guy, I mean, she's like an angel and he's like just a bad guy. I mean, he's not a bad guy and like he's evil, but like he just doesn't get it. Although sometimes when he says stuff like, you know, I'm not a salesman, you know, he says in some way, I'm not a salesman. I don't care if I draw seats. And she's like, you're not a professor either because you have no students. I think the idea is, you know, you've got to get with the times. And then yeah. so what happens with the, um, uh, the so Bill, the white guy, um, he like does a Nazi salute. Uh, he's like teaching them about fascism, and then like somebody makes a Hitler, you know, uh, meme out of it, and you know he's he he starts to get into real trouble. And I think in that case, you're supposed to think the students are crazy. Um, they're just misguided. Like they have, like I think the the you know because it's like it's so funny because when he's trying to apologize, like he gets one word out. He's like, uh, you know, I would like to apologize to all the people. And they're like, oh, like he said, all people. He should have said like Jewish people, right? And so it's like so ridiculous. Like two words, like every two words he says, like they're uh, you know they're they're ready to cancel him for it. Uh, Wait a so- minute. So Richard, though you you did a a, a very sort of like a well known study now on on public apologies. Yeah. So, so if, if, uh, if Bill had come to you and said, what should I do here? Mm-hmm. What, what would you, how would you advise him? You know, after I that, that controversy? Yeah. no, I, I think it's a, a crazy, you know, I think it's a crazy environment. I, yeah, I don't think you can stand up to, uh, 
the you know the red shirts during the you know the cultural revolution i don't think i don't think anything works there um, yeah well just for the listeners and the viewers so so richard's study basically found that uh at, at least you know the, the 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 findings as i remember them and you can correct me like if i got the details wrong was basically public apologies don't work that if a public figure issues an apology uh like you know uh people either what want want the person to be punished even more or the apology mm. basically has like no effect at all yeah, uh, and and you know that I found that study fascinating because like it's it, apparently like no one's ever read it because like public figures are constantly giving apologies for for you know s- yeah. mistakes or whatever. Well, maybe it's maybe it's wrong, and let me see why. Let me say why why it might be. Uh, you know, there's a thing you know external validity. So it's like you know you're in the lab, but not the lab literally. You're like giving it to people online the survey, and it's like all they hear is you know just a, f- a few things you, all you hear is right the you know, story and then you hear the person apologize or you didn't you know hear they apologize and you know put aside if this replicates you know i wouldn't just take one study even if it's my own um and so you know in, in real life there's a lot more going on right uh so let's say you're in a media firestorm and like if the apology gets the media to leave you alone you know theoretically Right. That could be yeah. more important than like, it's not somebody looking at it in isolation. Uh, so, you know, I, I don't, I don't know. I think sometimes Apollo, I think we worked for Trump in, you know, 2016, uh, when he got a <laughs> trouble, he was running for a Republican primary. I think it made mm-hmm. sense in, in that context. Um, mm-hmm. In other contexts, I don't know, but, you know, Trump just tried something new. I think people don't, you know, I think people are generally risk averse and, you know, if you just go out there and are unapologetic, I don't know, it sometimes works. I mean, if you, if you, you know, it sometimes works and I, you know, I don't know if it works in PR situations, but I don't mm. think people have tried it enough uh, to really know, right? Mm-hmm. You just don't see like, well, I mean... I mean, a lot of times, a lot of people don't apologize. Like, okay, like Biden, like a lot of people think the withdrawal from, withdrawal from Afghanistan is going poorly, right? You could say he could apologize for that, um, but he but he hasn't, right? Um, I think in that case, that would actually placate a lot of people, right? Like, because they're already like a lot of people who are critical of the withdrawing from Afghanistan are like politically on the same team as Biden. And so if he at least expressed like a little bit of remorse or sympathy, I think like that might actually sort of uh, alleviate. Yeah, the, I, I don't know. Like it, it just it just it just they're, what, the, what the narrative they're trying to push right now is it's actually not going that poorly. There was a suicide attacks this morning that ki- killed 12 people. So it's, it's harder now. But before the line was no Americans have been killed and this is very difficult. And and so, the, you know, I, I think, you know, you're trying to argue that the situation, which is what I believe, the situation is so bad that it was going to be uh, very messy no matter what what and so if you apologize you're admitting that the other side is right um and you actually did something wrong was that believable like in in the show you know like i was i was you know i I could tell like they were trying to create a controversy about bill uh in in a believable way uh while keeping him sympathetic right like you know if, if bill had you know clearly done something wrong right um then he wouldn't be a sympathetic character and you just immediately take the side of the students but they had to like well, create this controversy. And so the yeah. Nazi salute thing, like, yeah. I don't know if, would undergrads really get that upset about well, like this, this context, this out of, out of context clip of a professor yeah, well, doing I mean, a Nazi I mean, salute. Yeah. I mean, I th- it resembles some of the stories like the Halloween costume thing. And the, they remember the guy at the USC was teaching the China class, the Chinese mm. class. And he said a word that sounded like a racial slur. And then they, <laughs> and then they like, you remember that. Bottom. so that's something like that. That's like more ridiculous. Um, you think that's more ridiculous than the, the Nazi salute thing? I don't yeah, know. I just... he, was, he's like, te- he was teaching like Chinese. You didn't need to make a Nazi salute. He was like teaching Chinese. Um, yeah, actually, yeah, you're right. That was that was like, totally out there. Did, did he did he resign? Or, no, no, no. Was that the guy who killed himself? I don't think he killed himself. There no. was some professor who got shit was, oh, I know this, he committed I, I know suicide. Story. He he was a North. Well, I don't know if this is like, it might be a different guy, but there was a guy at Northwestern who was like a neuroscience PhD, and he had some anonymous educator account. And that mm. got found out, and then that guy killed him. So I don't know. I, I haven't heard. Maybe that was it. the guy. Yeah. 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 I just remember there was some professor who got in trouble. But, and but, but what I think is unrealistic yeah. is it was about offending Jewish people, um, which it which is in the university context not the biggest sin, right? The biggest sin in the university context is black people 
Um, and then I think, you know, it's like, it's like different. It's like the media, I think like anti-Semitism is up there. Um, I think on universities, not so much. And there's anti there's anti-Zionism and there's, you know, there's just sort of this idea that Jew, Jews are white. And so you don't see these like big cancellations over mm. offending Jews, right? On campuses in, in the media, whatever, something else it's different. So I guess um, that was, that was another way that it was safe. It was a safe way to like preserve Bill's likability while also getting him into trouble with the students was like he, you know, attacked or, or whatever, a, a group that is not, um, whatever is like not, not seen as, as especially oppressed in modern America. So well, they, they were able to like, might, you were with, yeah, may, maybe, but it was, yeah. So he could have like, I mean, right. if they like dug up a video clip of him saying like some, some racial slur or something, like it could have been yeah. much worse. Or I gave an opinion uh, that was, yeah. so you see what time they could, they could front of the, you know, they, they're just like the students, I think like, you know, they, they look terrible. They're just like, you know, brain dead morons. They're chanting like no Nazis at Pembroke, right? They're like, you know, you're obviously not a Nazi <laughs> and everyone knows that. And then like once they're like, you know, they say like, are you a Nazi or something like that? And he's like, uh, you know, no, Nazis hate professors, Nazis hate you know, human intellect or something like that. Yeah, so he's like, yeah, so he's not, he's not even, but, but he's like, he's sympathetic. I mean, this is the, you're supposed to be sympathizing with him, but he's, he's joking about it the whole time. So when he's private and when he's with uh, uh, the chairwoman, he's all, he's always like joking about it and saying, this is so stupid and not taking it seriously, which I think you're supposed to believe you're supposed to know that as a, as the viewer. Uh, as the viewer that it's stupid but but the, the during the the confrontation with him surrounded by the students which was you know very similar to to what had happened at Yale actually with the the Christakis controversy mm-hmm. he's surrounded by the students and like you know he's he's saying like I don't remember exactly what he said but basically like you, you know even though you just you know I apologize if you feel offended or whatever like by what I did but you know yeah. it wasn't it wasn't meant to be offensive and the students say something like so you're telling us how we're supposed to feel or you're, yeah. you're telling us how we're you know like you, you're telling us that we can't trust our own eyes or something like that and I, I guess like the viewer was also supposed to think like oh well the students have a point here but you know of course like probably for you and I at least for me you know I was watching that and thinking like why do these like why do these kids have so much power man like I like I'm, now I'm talking about like in the show and in the real world. Like I, I still to this yeah. day have no idea like why university administrations and professors and faculty care so much about like what a bunch of like naive 19 year olds think and like why they get to decide what's okay to well, say and what's not. Yeah. But uh, you know, I, you know, I, I think, yeah, I see everything as like, yeah, I see all of it as less ambiguous than you. I, you know, I see it going clearly in one direction and then clearly in, in another direction, you know, they, you know, the teaching Herman Melville, teaching old white authors with like no feminist perspective is bad. Not incorporating critical race theory is bad, but like <laughs> hounding yeah. someone because they put their arm up is like also bad, but like, you know, it's a reasonable sort of reaction because, you know, you're, you're woke now and that's actually good. Right. But it's just like you, you could take it too far and be stupid because you're you're young. And, and at the end, when the when uh, with Jay Yoon, uh, if that's her name, uh, it like gives a speech like, you know, we're supposed to like she tries to protect him. So he's, he's at his hearing to be fired, Bill. And she's trying to protect him. And she just gives this little you know speech where she's like, uh, you know, they're, they're students. You know, they're going to see through it if we fire him and nothing changes. Like so like she's saying the whole thing is stupid. And, you know, we're not here to like manage them or like manipulate them. Right. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. we're here to, you know, I guess, guide and guide and teach them. And I think that, you know, settles it that. You know, they, you're not supposed to think Bill is supposed to get fired. Like that's not r- true, right? It, 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 the, you are yeah, supposed to see this I, as I a crazy overreaction, um, even if the yeah. school. And, uh, but, but, you know, I like, yeah, I like how like yeah, in, in the classroom, like when they're questioning like you know the the problematic things, you know they are uh, they're so like they're sort of intelligent and well spoken, right? So it's like when it's within the classroom and they're like asking why you're teaching things this way, it's sort of like that's what you're supposed to do as a student. But then like when you're mobbing the guy on the quad, right? You know, you said Bill doesn't have like you said Bill doesn't have uh, politics. Did you say, right? Did you say that? I uh, oh did, did, I mean I, I just assumed cause there was that brief uh, interaction he had with I don't know who it was like the dean or something where he said like he supported South African divestment when yes he was a there, that, there, and there, so it sort of establishes credit you know street cred as a as like a you know whatever middle of the road liberal or something yeah well I mean well also at one point the uh, you know when the poli- when the campus cops show up and he's getting mobbed. And he's like later. He's like, oh no, or maybe at the time, he's like, you know, don't, they're gonna, they're associating me with the police. And they're like, you call the police, and he's like, he's like, <laughs> associating me with the police. That was <laughs> so stupid. Yeah, yeah. 
I remember and then, that. And then there was another one time when uh, a Jew came in and and he's like, you know, people are saying I'm giving fodder to the alt right. Do you remember that? Yeah. I remember that. And I remember hearing that word alt-right. I'm like, is it 2017 again? Like no one talks about the alt-right anymore. Like that, I thought that phrase went out of fashion already. Yeah. Uh, but, but that was, I mean, this is like when they said that, that also made me think like, you know, if, if Trump had been reelected, uh, this show would hit very differently and Bill would be perceived very differently, I think. Right. Like, I think like they would have had to do something a, a extra in the show to establish that Bill is not a Trump supporter. Like they would have had him like you right. know, make That's fun of Trump or, or like like light a MAGA hat on fire to like show yeah, that like even though Bill Trump. is they yeah Trump, so right. so even though Bill is like you know even though he made this horrible salute and the students are mad at him you know you're still still supposed to view him as sympathetic in some way uh, but but because Biden is in the office and like I think the liberals are like less you know they're less like on edge they can uh, they can sympathize with someone like bill without worrying about where he lies politically although it's, i think it was pretty clear you know based on the the scene with the south african divestment thing that he's he's probably on the same side yeah um, yeah that was uh i mean th that whole like you know well one of the things that i didn't like about this show i mean there were there were there were quite a few but one was like the the amount of like like when they're trying to establish these characters mm -hmm. like the amount of swearing uh, that that was going on in the like yeah. like Jayun like within like the first twenty minutes she said the word fuck like I don't know fifty or sixty times and like maybe not that I mean, I'm exaggerating somewhat but I remember yeah. being like okay we get it like she's kind of cool she's kind of edgy the old lady too the older female professor that's uh, what all academics are especially and, females these days do you think I, they I, say they, fuck a lot like I, I mean I, I, they, yeah they they I, do um, it's so you like, think that's realistic. I, I mean, yeah, because the um, like, you know, the like, it's funny because like the more woke people are and the more like, you know, racial slurs are or like, you know, homophobic slurs are like unthinkable to them. I, you know, it's a, the sort of more normalized regular swearing is. So John McCorder has like talked about this, how like regular okay. swears are no longer profanity. Um, you know, actually, like, yeah. OK, I've and, noticed that. Yeah, and and so I mean, like, if you go to a bookstore, I was at Barnes and Noble the other day, and like you know, you see all the like the the best selling books, and it's like you know, the subtle art of not giving a fuck, like you're yeah. a badass, like go fuck yourself, like yeah, badass. Like, they yeah, love to say so badass for for women. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So so yeah, they are so over the top in swearing, and like you know, and if you're like not woke, like you're a regular American, it's like it's like we have different swears, like based on you know uh, class and politics. Um, so, yeah, so that was I don't know, man. I just didn't see it like, I mean, in my experience, like academics swear, but like not on the level in the show it was just so like cringe to me. It didn't sound natural. Yeah. Like, I, and, and yeah, but I guess like it, it, it aligns with your point to some degree because like Bill and none of the, it was, like, the, the, it was, the, it was like, the women, it was, it was primarily Sandra the o. women. Yeah. Sandra O. Oh, yeah. Was, I mean, mostly Sandra. But like, yeah, it was, it was primarily, the, I think even the little girl, her daughter, uh, Juju, I think she, she even drops a couple of swears. And uh, is that like a way to like to establish that they're you know nonconformists or cool or edgy or something like? Yeah, I think so. People don't swear that much. Yeah, I, I didn't. Think that, I, I didn't. I mean, I wasn't struck. I didn't think the swearing was that over the top. Like mm -hmm. they swore a lot. It seemed sort. Of, it seemed a little bit more normal to me. Uh, right. So I, I didn't. <laughs> I didn't get that as much. Okay. All right. Um, yeah. Yeah. Did you? Uh, I mean. One of the things, so so in, uh, I, I forgot what episode this was, but uh, Jai Yoon, she was uh, announcing something like, uh, you know, all, all of the problems in the world. And she said, you know, wh why would people read a sonnet when, uh, and I, I even wrote them down, when, when there's other things to be worried about, uh, climate change, racism, homophobia, the yeah. prison industrial complex. Right. Uh, and, and I found like, you know, I was wondering like why those specific, you know, th there could have been other things, you know, they, they didn't mention uh, 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 inequity. They didn't mention poverty. Um, and then I thought like homophobia, you know, I, like, I haven't heard uh, left wing activists decry homophobia in, in probably at least five years. So mm -hmm. I wondered why like they, they introduced that into into the, that scene. Yeah. Um, there are other kinds of like the prison industrial complex. I guess that's something that, that people worry about. But uh, yeah. You know, so, so but it, it very clearly shows, you know, like, like, I mean, that is something, like how academics think like that is those are like the, the, the top of the list concerns. It's true. Um, yeah. yeah. Another thing that was sort of incongruent, incongruent was uh, the way um, like there was no like division in the student body based on politics uh, and, you know, race, uh, race based. So like it wasn't mm -hmm. like it was like every time like somebody would be mobbed. 
it would be like perfectly representative of the university. So there'd be like white guys there and like white women and black people. And <laughs> oh yeah, when, when Bill was mobbed, it was a yeah, very, it was very ethnically it was diverse. A rainbow. It's, and I think yeah. that you know, in real situations, usually there's some demographics that are more upset than others. I think there's a lot of women, a lot more blacks, and so there's a lot of black people in this university um, on campus. But like they're not disproportionately represented in the, the the protest movement. They're disproportionately represented among those who make smart comments in class. Right? They're mm. always like owning the old white professor. <laughs> but, yeah, yeah. They, so, but the but like the students are just united. Like so, it's like it's imagining something that's like. It, it's like these. There's like some, but there's certain facts that like the the liberals who made this show don't want to acknowledge, right? They don't want they they see like okay, there's young people and there's old people uh, who are the professors, but there's not like within young people, there's no like divisions based on race or sex, um, and there's no like Republicans in this world, and maybe you know maybe that's realistic. Um, <laughs> Oh, by the yeah, way, probably. there was a uh, there was a scene where you know Bill is suspended. He can't be on campus. He's on campus, and somebody looks at him, and the guy has like a pink hat on. And I thought this was weird. And he goes, uh, he goes, yeah, free speech, man. Pink hat, okay. or red, red or pink? I think it was pink. Yeah. Okay. You remember the scene because it was so. I, I thought that was like supposed to be like a Turning Point USA guy. That's what I thought was uh, going. On. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. Yeah. 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 That, okay. I, I vaguely recall that scene. He looked scene like a preppy I, white guy. He looked like a stereotype, but he, he yeah. I didn't see like, he wasn't wearing like GOP merchandise or anything. Um, yeah. I think, and, and like Bill's like taken aback. And I think it's sort of like, well, no, I don't want to be on this guy's side. Right. Yeah. So he's sort of torn, which I think like a lot of, I mean, anytime there's sort of these, uh, these campus uh, eruptions, I think like sort of centrist liberals are, are, are like conflicted because, you know, of course, on the one hand, like, you know, there, there are sort of old school liberal principles dictate that they're supposed to support freedom of expression and so on and so forth. But, you know, they don't want to be seen as a Republican. Like that's the number one fear is to be yeah. seen as a conservative or a Republican or it was a Trump so subtle. person. Yeah, that, that was the only yeah. scene where like a Republican or somebody who might be a Republican. I think like, a, 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 yeah, they could have this. I think it would have been realistic if like a couple of like students had come to Bill's defense and like at like, went to his office hours or something and like basically like quietly tried to give him some support. Um, but I think like the show wanted to keep it simple, right. And just say like, oh, the, the undergrads are upset and just like yeah. make it seem like the entire campus is upset with Bill. When I guarantee you, like, you know, I, I've seen protests erupt like this before, and it's really something like 10 to 15% of people who are really mad and everyone else is just sort of quiet and like, ah, whatever. Yeah. Like, I guess we're, they just, they just want to like get on, get on with their day. But the, the way that the show portrayed this, this, um, this controversy is like all the undergrads are upset and we need to, exactly. you know, what do we do about Bill? And, and, and Jai Yoon is, is seen as like, sort of like also on, on the side of the students while also not wanting to fire Bill, like trying to have it both ways where she's saying like, you know, they're going to see right through us, like, you know, we're going to see right, right through us firing Bill. So yeah. that's not going to change anything. You know, the, the world is burning and we're worried about our endowment. And I remember hearing that and thinking like, if actually if academics focused more on the endowment and less on the outside world, maybe things would actually be a little bit better. Yeah. Um, but you no, know, they have to like focus on all these cultural issues, and uh, yeah. So, so, so she herself had to like, like this is how I think this is how centrist boomer professors uh, try to placate the activist mobs by saying like, well, if we do that, that's not really going to solve the underlying problem. Like, like we're on the same side. This isn't going to yeah. solve it, you know. So it, yeah, yeah. That that sort of like I, I think it portrayed that 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 inherent uh, tension within within the the the, yeah. the sort of faculty pretty well. Yeah. What do you think about, you know, the fact that it was uh, like, I, I thought the romance story wasn't really believable. I mean, I don't like to see old <laughs> people having romance, to be honest. I mean, I, I thought that Sandra O oh, was maybe a little old. I mean, he was old, too. But, you know, it works <laughs> definitely be... for men yeah. and women. And, oh, man. Richard. Yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> and the fact that, you know, the, the, I think they're supposed to be like the same age or similar age, or maybe she's a little older than him. I don't know. Uh, but he's pining after her. And like this, this young woman who chase him, by the way, like these, yeah, the, the, the female undergrad was, who is, uh, in the end is not chasing him. She like laughs at him. Right. Um, but, uh, he's not interested in like students. He's interested in like, you know, this, this, uh, elderly, you know, <laughs> elderly. she's not elderly. Not close, close. I think in, in the show, they, they say that she's 47. Well, somebody you know, says that's... she's forty-seven, and she's like, "Oh, I'm 50. Uh, was that she oh. like fifty-two? Or somebody said something oh, really? like forty-three, and she said forty-seven. She was actually older than you know what they said. 
Um, oh, really? Okay. But yeah, she's, she's past her prime. I mean, obviously. <laughs> and, and I think okay. like, I think shows try to like force that idea. I think they have unrealistic ideas about like what people are interested in and like what romance is like and what men like. Well, do you think that, so so I guess one, like this could be another way of, of, of preserving Bill's like ability. So if Bill, (laughs) yeah, that he likes older women, right? Or, or, you know, age appropriate women, right? right? Like if, 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 if Bill was like hooking up with undergrad, like if everything was the same, but Bill had slept with that undergrad, I think, people would perceive his character to be completely different and they wouldn't necessarily defend him or want him to be defended against the... I think that's completely right. I think 10 years ago or 20 years ago, he would have taken advantage of the undergrads. I think that that would have been, and he still would have been sympathetic. I I think that, you know, he could have gotten away with that um, in the show. But in 2021, no, you're right. He has to, he has age appropriate feelings towards women. Exactly. Yes, people his own age. He's very responsible. He's, he's a good, um, he he drinks a lot. He's like a cliche. His wife died. So that's, that's why he's single. Um, oh, there was a scene that that, that uh, kind of yeah. There, okay, so what was it? He was talking to Juju, uh, the uh, Jayun's adoptive daughter, the the little uh, uh, Latina or Latinx girl. Yeah. And uh, Latina, and you he, skip Latina. You are Latino or Latinx yeah, or, or Hispanic. You know, the the, the young Hispanic girl, and uh, and and she. I, I don't know. Somehow they were talking about marriage, and the, and Bill. Uh, tells the little girl, you know, some people say marriage is a, is a bourgeois institution. Yeah. And, and that, I mean, he was saying that to a little girl who was put up for adoption and was currently being raised by a single old mom who, who doesn't have enough time to raise her. Right. Yeah. And like, Bill has to be there to babysit. And like, I just found that like, you know, this, this sort of like, you know, whatever the, the privileged white man saying that, uh, uh, marriage is this bourgeois institution mm-hmm. to this like little girl who probably like had, you know, poor parents and now is being raised by a single mom and like, Oh, but, yeah. but marriage is this bad thing. Like, I think like there was something, uh, uh, yeah, there was, I, I couldn't tell if this was like commentary in the part of the creators or, or if, if they were just trying to like make Bill look cool by saying something edgy about marriage. Yeah. But to me, like, uh, my observation was like, this is a privileged person telling this like poor, like this poor little girl, uh that that marriage is outdated and and yeah. uh even though you yourself are are sort of like um uh, suffering the the consequences of, of that kind yeah. of belief system so the, yeah so the little girl is sort of like uh you know like sort of uh sex system like the context of the of the show so she's like she tells her <laughs> mom at one point like no wonder nobody wanted to marry you um and uh, yeah, she's yeah, like yeah, yeah saying i want to you know i want to i want to have a baby you know when i'm 25 or 26 um and so she's like thinking about you know being a mother uh, already um which you know is normal for little girls but maybe not normal in sort of like a you know woke tv show um that was surprising actually when she was saying that i and i, when I was waiting for the essential i don't want to be too old say. yeah she says i don't want to be too old right which is like yeah, yeah which is like i, I don't An know underhanded if it's like, jab. yeah and so it's like yeah I, what so what are they doing is it like you know is it like I, you're not supposed to be against a little girl. I'm sure she's not. You're not. She's not supposed to be seen as a sexist or problematic, right? Yeah. Uh, Although, so, wouldn't some liberals watching this show? Well, I guess like people in general, that's just liberal, but wouldn't people like watch that? And and the first thing that would come to a lot of people's minds, especially like highly educated people, uh, where did she pick up those ideas from? Like who? Like what? Like how did the patriarchy? insert those ideas into this poor little girl's mind to make her think that she should want to get married and have kids. Where did yeah. she absorb this from? Which is like, I, I mean, like, and, and I wonder like how they would answer this. Like, is it, uh, you know, the culture, because clearly like, I don't think Sandra O oh is telling the little girl like, Oh, you yeah. should be getting married and having babies. Well, on gender, it's actually, I mean, okay. So there's the, there's the title nine sort of uh, story. We, we could, we could talk about that where the old woman is like, you know, she's been discriminated against, but on the gender yeah. politics, it's very, um, it's very muted compared to the race stuff. And like, especially like LGBTQ, there's like, no, there's no gay or trans or gender fluid character uh, anywhere to be found in the show. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so it is like a sort of moderate liberalism that way. And I, I think like trans and like gender fluid and that stuff is like, there's like huge on college campuses these days. Right. So it, it's, it's um, yeah, it, it's, it's mostly race. It's about, black people uh, it's about women i guess it's about you know feminism like feminism, i think it's like, supposed like, to be a feminist show right like it is I mean, but it's, it's not like yeah yeah i mean women are supposed to you know they're they're being thwarted by men in their careers and like you know that's true well, there was that, that's there's the scene and they use it in the trailers too 
which I guess, you know, that indicates that it's supposed to be uh, emblematic of the show. She says, oh, you know, I feel like I was handed this ticking time bomb yes. because they wanted to make sure a woman was holding it when it exploded. And I could imagine like a lot of, you know, women watching that scene and sort of connecting with it and feeling like, you know, like that, that is an accurate statement. Um, so I think it is supposed to be like the sort of this, this, uh, not, not a woke show, but definitely a feminist show. Yeah. Yeah. I think you're yeah. right, but mm-hmm. I, it's certainly give it's given second billing to the race. Mm-hmm. So the, the, the Nazi thing is a, is a Jewish thing. It's an ethnic, it's an ethnic thing. Mm-hmm. Um, and then, yeah, I thought no, the Bill no, character. No, you know, you know, the, yeah, the Herman Melville. You're right. I guess what it doesn't have, I, it does. Yeah, Herman Melville because they had no women. You're right. You're right. There's a lot of feminist stuff actually, uh, but there is no like. There's no LGBTQ, which I associate with feminism now. There's no like, um, you know, women have to be exactly. I mean, exactly like men. There's there's no hint of that. There's no hint of like, you know, gender is on a spectrum, right? There, there's nothing. There's nothing uh, like that anywhere mm-hmm. um, in this show. Uh, and I think if you have like undergrads these days, I think a, a large portion of them are probably some, you know, some kind of LGBT or le- le- gender fluid and uh, visit, all you know? of them, not all of them. No, well, I not all of them. I mean, you would see, you would see some, right? A few, a few sure. Yeah. yeah. Maybe. I, I mean, I, I, well, I, but, but I think like this, sh- there were, there are going to be future seasons, right? And I, I, I'm sure they're going to explore like different strands of, sort of like social justice uh activism and you know next time it's going to be sandra O oh saying like some outdated you know label for gay people or something and then she's going to get in trouble i'm sure there's going to be some you know there's going to be like more of these kinds of of campus controversies um one of the things uh so so there was the that scene uh, where Bill, I think he was drunk, uh, visiting uh, Sandra O oh and her her family, and the little Korean boy or was it a baby? I don't remember the gender, but the little Korean was baby was like it was a girl going for it was like money and a paintbrush, right? And the baby, like I, I guess, like you know, the Korean grandparents or something, sort of you know, nudge the baby over to grab the money rather than the paintbrush. Yeah, it and, tells the future. I thought I didn't know Koreans yeah. do that. I thought it was a Buddhist thing, like, like mm-hmm. finding the llama. So we, they put a bunch of things, and then the, the one who uh, finds the right one, but it's fairly for a baby. Yeah. A baby goes, and then like there's like a pencil which says you'll be a teacher, like oh, a pencil, something for a doctor. No, there's a brush too, which will make you like an artist. Wait, what is the money then? Money is you'll be rich. <laughs> Just be rich. Yeah, yeah, right. yeah, it's mixed in there. So uh, yeah, and so, so, so the baby grabs the money, right? And the and baby, uh, it Bill freaks out. Well, no, because it, the, she, she cheated though. The the there was an old <laughs> woman who pushed the baby towards the money right and yeah. he's like the baby should want to be an artist so he freaks out right exactly yeah and want, wants the baby to be an artist and like to me this is you know of course i'm probably reading too much into this show but this is like you know sort of like white liberals trying to like interfere with the desires of people in another culture like yes like asian people often are very materialistic uh and they especially like people who haven't been uh, fully conditioned and indoctrinated into western yeah. culture uh, they're okay with like like money as an end in itself, right? Like, you know, if you're an enlightened Western liberal, it's like money is, you know, whatever, capitalism is evil, neoliberalism or whatever. But if you're like a, an Asian person who hasn't been indoctrinated, like going for money is an okay thing to do. And like, especially elderly Asian people think that like wanting to be rich is totally fine goal. Yeah. Uh, and then of course, like this sort of like half drunken, like, you know, this, this sort of Bill character comes in and like has to like interfere with the desires of this other culture and, 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 you know, sort of control it and put it back in his direction. So I don't know, I, I found that, like the symbolism of this, of like, okay, so there's this baby and then there's the Korean grandparents. And then there's this like white dude. And it's like, you know, yeah. buying for control over what this baby should want. And, uh, and in the end, uh, the, well, you know, for, for, for Asian students today, it's actually the white liberals who won that battle <laughs> there. The white liberals have much more sway, uh, over, over what, uh, young Asians want compared to, compared to their grandparents. Yeah. Well, no, I, I think it was, I think it was opposite. Actually. I think the, I think the Asians were supposed to be backwards because you had those two women, um, mm. who were talking about Bell and they were like, you know, they were talking about how, you know, they were talking about how, uh, you know, uh, the Jewin was like so, um, uh, so old and can't find a husband. And you, you remember the Korean, <laughs> so she's living with her father and her father. And oh, they call it a Frankenstein family. 
Like she's, it's like, it's like her with the oh, dog. Oh yeah. You're not supposed to sympathize with that. And then the father is like, you could have had a real husband and a real family. So like the whole time they're attacking yeah. their choice, which is not to get married and like have biological children. I um, found that yeah. interesting though, because, because that introduces this conundrum in, in, uh, in, 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 in an enlightened viewer's mind, because on the one hand, you're supposed to be like, you know, pro-feminism and blah, oh, that's, blah, blah. That's the white but you're not supposed to criticize yeah. You're not supposed to criticize this traditional culture, right? Like no, these old school that's, Koreans. That's, that's the white, white, white adjacent, the nest of, of the Asians, I think. Um, what, is, what do you mean? Well, it's, okay. So they're people of color. Yes. And I guess the ones mm. born in America are fully enlightened. But, you know, I guess the ones who come here can still be. So it's like, okay. So like there's a hierarchy, right? So if, if you're like a black family, um, like nothing you do can necessarily be that bad. Like American born blacks, right? Um, I, I think is sort of like the top of the hierarchy. And then um and then I think the uh uh and then at the um uh and then at the uh at the um, and then you have like yeah, white people like backwards white people are of course the worst. Um right. Like non college educated whites. Yeah, but Asians are sort of in between. Um and so, uh, yeah. Well, I don't know. Like, like I, I think like the the white adjacent thing. Like, wasn't that about like at least my my interpretation of it? Like, it was about sort of like second generation Asians who had been educated at elite universities. Like, those are like the white adjacent types. But like, if you're like like fresh off the boat, like Korean grandparents, like are they considered white adjacent? I feel like they're more on like the POC end of the the spectrum. No. Yeah, Ironically, so, uh, they themselves would never adopt that label. Yeah, I but. think, I think like, the, you know, the, this is, there are like, you know, people, a lot of people who are immigrants and children of immigrants. Like who's more oppressed, Sandra O oh in the show or her parents, right? Like who's the more sort of victimized group in that I mean, situation? Her, her parents, but I, you know, I mean, her parents are, but like, you know, I don't think liberals, you know, it's not, it's not something that you can sweep under the rug, right? The fact that every culture has conservative views on, on these things and it's never like and like so you portray it and it's sort of like sort of harmless it's like an annoying badgering and so you can get you can you could criticize it as like you know it, it's not like their um their racism or sexism or whatever it, it, those uh, old asian people it's not like their um Sorry, I'm just sweating away a fly. It's not like that that is leading, is like a history of white supremacy and genocide or anything like that. It's just portrayed as like something that's annoying, like for the family member who is born in America and enlightened and has to, has to put up with it. While sort of like white people being, you know, backwards are, are part of a long history of oppression, right? Although you could say that about, you know, Asians or, or whatever other group too, um, when they're being sexist. But you know, it's not seen that way. There's not this historical guilt. It's just like, oh, ha, ha. like you know, like you could say, like, oh, my crazy, you know, my crazy uncle, my crazy grand grandpa. You can't have a white character like that anymore because it's too serious. White supremacy and misogyny are. Oh, too Oh yeah, yeah, I hundred percent. I mean, like, if Bill's parents, like, if Bill had, you know, well, these eighty-year-old yeah. white parents who were like, why aren't you married? Or you know, like saying, like, you know, whatever, yeah. like talking about Frankenstein families or something. Yeah. Like people would have been like, fuck Bill's parents, those evil Republican, whatever. But yeah. if it's you know, the Sandra O, oh, like, you know, immigrant parent, grandparents, and it's like, ah, oh, you know, yeah, it's, like, it's ah, kind of okay. cute. It's kind of like, like, you don't take it seriously, right? Because yeah. they're not, um, I guess, like, they're not seen as, as, as threatening one way or the other. Like, you can't really use them to shore up, uh, you know, your own team, but you, you know, you're not really fearful of them as being supporters of the other team. So it's just sort of like this cute thing, like, like, like their children almost. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, yeah and so they're and they're for and they're but there is a thing where like they're foreign so it's like it's funny yeah they're foreign so it's like an elevated status like you know because you're people of color you can get away with more but it's also sort of an enfeebling status like your your ideas are not that important they're like annoying to your family and they have no yeah. force in society and they'll eventually go with your children are assimilating and th this is it for you <laughs> this is it for you yeah. and your traditional beliefs so the, you know there, there's sort of that too it's sort of looking down at them but at the same time you're sort of giving letting them get away with they're so things. distant they're so like outside of your reality that you can't like they don't factor into like the political battles of the day i mean I think I want to say this was um, it might have been Robin Hansen or um, Tyler Cowens, but like I remember one of them had this blog post basically discussing um, like when groups like intergroup conflict 
And they basically argue that like when groups are in like close proximity, conflict is more likely to erupt. But even if, uh, and, and they'll even accept allies who are much different from themselves in order mm-hmm. to attack a group that's very similar to themselves. And like one of the examples they gave was, uh, was Germany, like murdering a bunch of Jews, but well, at the same, same time, they were allied with Japan, right? Like the Japanese were very different from the Germans, but they were willing to ally with them and they were murdering Jewish people who were much closer to them in terms of culture and history and so on. Um, yeah. But I think like in this, in this context, it's like, you know, if someone's like, like far enough away from, from your like understanding of the political conflicts in your society, then you don't really care about them or you're even willing to ally with them or something. And so in this case, it's like, ah, these, these sort of like, uh, you know, Koreans, they don't speak English. They're not really, yeah, they don't really yeah. factor well, in. Well, I mean, what's really fascinating is if you've ever watched a, like a, a TV show with instead of Korea, like an extreme version of this is like, if you watch a show about Muslim, about Muslim Americans, there was one, uh, was it Netflix or Hulu or something? It's called Remy. It's about this Egyptian American. I've only seen like two episodes, uh, but he's like, his family is like trying to get him an arranged marriage. And like, they're saying you could have a, you know, a nice wife who like wears a hijab and is very, you know, humble and all this and like that's okay for like the muslims too right it's not it's not threatening exactly the exactly the same but there's yeah there's something you know there's something like authentic about how it's portrayed in the sense that like like yeah this division between the immigrants and their children is is very real um and it's there a lot and it's like the fact that liberals don't care enough about it to be so ideological about it where like one side has to be good and one side has to be bad, like just lets you sort of portray it realistically, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's right. I wanted to uh, to talk about the, there was an interesting scene with with David Duchovny. Yeah. Um, so Sandra, Oak, like I guess they were trying to recruit him as like a celebrity professor on campus or something. David Duchovny, you know, he's a star of the X Files, Californication, uh, pretty well known actor. And there was that scene where, uh, you know, he says something to her. I can't remember what, but he was like, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying that because you're Asian. Um, well, yeah, I, 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 yeah. Goes, I don't see you, color. Yeah. What do like, you you're, you're in the science, de- uh, you know, maybe you're in the science department or something. And she's like, I'm not, not because you're <laughs> Asian. Because you're Asian. Uh, mm-hmm. and, and then he, and he follows up. He says, I don't see color. And I think like that was supposed to be, you know, a riff on this, this joke, right? Like, oh, people who don't see color, like that's, that's not realistic or there's something like that's, that's seen as passe now. I think like, yeah. you know, 30 years ago, if you said, I don't see color, that was seen as a very progressive thing. And now yeah. if you say, I don't see color, you know, there's sort of like a backwards passe, like, you know, uh, gauche thing to say now. Um, but I think that like the reason, I, I think that that scene worked well because um, Duchovny, Duchovny can get away with saying that. Because he's like this, um, you know, he's a Hollywood actor. He's a good looking guy. There was that like kind of like sexual tension when he's getting out of the pool and he's wearing a Speedo and Sandra is kind of like embarrassed or whatever. And so clearly there's this sort of chemistry between them because, you know, he's a Hollywood star. Um, and so when he says like, oh, I don't see color, it's funny, but it's it's endearing in a way. Um, whereas if um, one of the like old, like one of the old white guys at the university, you know, the administrators or whatever, they say like, oh, I don't see color. That would have been like it would have been a different uh, reaction, I think, to, to saying something like that. Yeah, those guys were they were skating on. Yeah, they were always skating on the nice. It's funny those old white guys how they like went out of their way to humiliate them. Like there's one where like the old the old uh, the guy the Yasmin's nemesis is like in bed with his wife. And she's like, okay, you have to wear diapers. It's not going to be so bad. It has nothing to do with the story, right? <laughs> they just want to like tell you that he's like, twist old. the knife. <laughs> All it is, it's like yeah, yeah. He, he needs diapers, like yeah. Yes, yeah, so, <laughs> there's. I think it's like it's like yeah. What is that? There was that like a vicarious thrill of like celebrating the passing of this like old backwards reactionary generation, and yeah, you know, it's like fun to see them slowly decay, and and to know that they'll finally be gone. We'll be rid of them forever. Yeah. Um, although like, but, but, but that's the white guys, right? Like it's still, I think the, the show portrays the woman, the old, the elder female professor uh, in a, in a fairly positive yeah, light. She so swears a lot and she's a vic- she's a victim. So she like, at the end, she realizes that, she, you know, first year, so they gave her the wrong office. They put her in like, you know, the bottom uh, of like the gym or something. And uh, she's also, um, yeah, she, she realizes that, you know, whatever, whatever, 30, 40 years ago when she got hired, like a man got hired who was making a lot more money than her. Uh, mm. And so, there, yeah, there's this thing where it's like, it's like her story is sort of grandfathered in. It's like, you know, it's like, uh, you know, there's still, 
you know, I guess that, you know, you're supposed to think this still happens. Right. Mm. Um, but it's always like, oh, you know, sure. and, I, and I didn't say anything at the time. And then the old professor's wife <laughs> who gives them the diapers is like, you know, I want a yeah. tenure, but you know, oh, I had to take care of three kids. Right. And it, so it's like, it's like the, the old generation like had these battles and they like, yeah. are not as advanced and in your face as the new generation who would like, know to like at least, speak up for themselves right what's really funny though is that like and maybe the show will will uh take the story in this direction later and, and i think like it would be interesting is if that professor the elder female professor uh like made some kind of social faux pas like used an outdated term or said something wrong uh think, whether they would go after her that it's just going to be like another person another mob coming after her. i don't know i think i think yeah. they've done that i don't know i, if that's I think gonna... like they i think that would be interesting though because like you know, and this has happened in real life too, where like these old school activists are are sort of like like toppled by by the new generation, even though like they claim to have paved the way and like did all this work so that you could have all the whatever the experiences and advantages you have now. Um, yeah. And yeah, they could, yeah, they could take it in that direction. Um, yeah. yeah, I wonder. I wonder what else. The, yeah, what else has it been? Uh, has it been renewed for a second season? Mm, I don't know. You want to go yeah. and Google it? <laughs> I don't. I don't know. I, I doubt know. it. Yeah, yeah. I don't think so. Um, yeah, yeah. What? What else? Uh, what else did you find interesting about the show? Uh, has not. They've not officially renewed it. Uh, yeah. Mm. I. Um, ah, yeah. What else? What else was there? You know, there was. Hmm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The, the little girl, Juju, like, the, you know, so she um, she's Me- she's Mexican background and like she's doing this thing where she's like uh, engaging in what do they do? She's like, uh, I don't know. It's like a Mexican holiday or tradition. She's dressed. For, she's doing something for school. Right. Yeah. And the face painting. Because it's like she has nothing. There's, I don't know, like how old she was when she was adopted. But I don't know if she has any memory of like being in a Mexican family or anything. Right. And so like her culture, her heritage she was given a Korean name, right? Uh, but her heritage was completely blood-based. It was the fact that she was descended from Mexicans, right? I thought that was interesting. Oh, that they that they sort of like uh, inculcate an appreciation for her like ethnic heritage. Or yeah, ancestry, which is both, like you're even though to she's that. being raised not by a Korean woman. Yeah, not culturally like Mexican in any way, right? Yeah, and and I guess there's not really much uh, in the way of like. Yeah, it's sort of ambiguous, like how how um, assimilated or not Sandra O oh is, but it doesn't seem like she's passing on any Korean. Uh, okay, she learned whatever. Korean, right? learns Korean, right? Oh, Juju does learn Korean. Yeah, and well, at the end, oh, okay. I, remember, I remember that scene where um, uh, she responds to something. Well, there's a scene, there's like a thing where like her and the father disagree on whether she says Korean, and at the end, yeah, like she responds to something in Korean. Uh, yeah. So not like settles. She she did like get it through. She just picked it up. Uh, what about what do you, goes, yeah, go ahead. do you think that, so, so earlier you mentioned, you know, like, like the, the sort of love story between Bill and, and, and Sandra O, oh, um, that the creators, like you, you mentioned like, oh, the creators have like misguided beliefs about like romance and like who people are interested in. Do yeah. you think that they're like, like they are sincerely mistaken or do you think they're trying to like, or do they have an agenda? Like, like if, are they thinking like, I know that like usually these kind of romances don't really happen, but I want to put it in the show to like change the culture and like get people to believe this. Or do you think like, Oh, this is, this is a real thing and we should portray real romance and how it really looks. Uh, I think that if you, um, if you told me who the writers were, maybe I would have a better opinion (laughs) because I think if it's middle-aged woman, I think it's so such wishful thinking thinking. that they, yeah, that they totally convince themselves. Mm-hmm. I don't think anyone actually. I don't think anyone thinks like that. Like people should have these preferences, and therefore I'm going to force it upon them. Right. I, I think that you know. I think not just wishful thinking for middle aged women. I think you know, a young, a young uh, liberal man would probably want to believe the same thing. Um, so yeah, I, I think it's sincere. You think a young I, liberal man would want to believe that a middle aged man? And the other thing. Wait, what's you think a, a young liberal man would want to believe that like an, a middle-aged man would, would be interested in like think, someone his yeah, own age? I think, I think so. I think it's very, this is something very harsh for liberals to like the, 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 you know, women's attractiveness, like going like this. I think that's something that a lot of women don't want to acknowledge. And a lot of men, if they're liberal, especially uh, don't want to acknowledge. 
Um, but the other yeah. thing that was unrealistic was like when 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 the other, when the uh, young uh, student like comes into Bill's house, like and he thinks she's interested in the whole show. Like, you're supposed to think she's interested in him, but turns out she like laughs at him. And so I think right, the yeah. idea is also like it's in denial about this too that like a young student would not like an older professor because Bill is supposed to be charismatic and fun and everyone loves him and he's uh you know and so he's you know he's not that old he's like you know 45 55 whatever um and so like the idea is like no an 18 19 year old would never she'd say he's too old and she'd never be attracted to him right yeah so but she then, laughed right he said like I know oh you know yeah, I don't know. he said something to her indicating like he thinks yeah. that she's interested and she laughs at him and says like, oh, of course so, not. like, yeah, under liberal, and I think like, everyone has to have like age appropriate preferences, like a 20 year old woman will like a 20 year old <laughs> man, a 50 year old man will like a 50 year old woman. There's no in the realistic shows that we love, right? Like Sopranos are like Mad Men. They're the asymmetry Even, is real and it's acknowledged. So interestingly, speaking of David Duchovny, it, so he made a joke in this show in the chair, uh, he, you know, something about like how, oh, is there like. Is there some kind of like controversy in, in, in the department because I graduated from Yale and Pembroke is a lower yeah. Ivy? Um, but Duchovny played a character in, in the in the Showtime series Californication, which I don't know if you ever watched. No. But he plays an, an author, like a, a best-selling author who's like an alcoholic and you know a womanizer, um, like a sort of Charles Bukowski-esque character. And in that show, he is like this sort of like aging professor. He's probably like 40 or 45 uh, in, in the Californication show. And like, yeah, he's hooking up with undergrads left and right in that show. Like he's exactly as you say, right? But that that show was made in like 2007. Right. So, so it's a completely different era, right? Like in 2007 or 2010 or whenever, like it was still okay to like show that aspect of human sexuality and romance. And like, yes, if you're a sort of older male in a position of power, like, and it wasn't played as like um, him taking advantage of them. It was played as yeah. like funny and humorous and and whatever, like fun. Uh, whereas today, if they tried to make that same kind of show of like, you know, a 45 year old professor hooking up with undergrads, it would be like this sort of outrageous controversy yeah. on Twitter and, and talking about like grooming and feminism and power. Yeah, it's it's, uh, it's it's interesting how fast things have changed in just, you know, 10, yeah. 15 years. And it's not just it's not just like uh, it's like we've, we, our ideas of like age of consent have like changed where it's like even adults like there can't be too big of a too big of a gap so like it's not just because of students right students and professors i think even if like it's a you know a businessman and a secretary right if there's a 20 year difference and liberalism is so delusional that it denies the attraction is even there. It doesn't just go out of its way to say this is wrong. It's like, no, like the, we're going to remake sort of human sexuality and human nature to fit our ideas. And I think this is, I think this is like, yeah, I think this is a, um, yeah. I, I, and I think this is like a, uh, you know, even like, you know, there's a lot of things. I, mean, well, I, like I a, think like, you know, so it's, that's why I ask. Like, do you think the showrunners are doing that? Like, are they delusional, or are you know, they I, I um, trying to remake? Are, I think all liberals are delusional. I, I don't think they think we are <laughs> remaking the way people think about, uh, you know, sex and love and marriage. Or are they trying to correct what they see as an error? I think that might be another way of thinking about it. Like, they think it's an error. Like, it's a mistake that that older men would want to be with younger women, or that younger women would want to be with older men. So let me correct this mistaken. Uh, uh, tendency that people have yeah. and, 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 and to sort of put things right by showing that like, Oh, people should have age appropriate um, uh, romantic interests. <laughs> so let's, let's, let's portray how things should really be. No, if, if they do that, they would, I mean, they'd be red pilled. I think, I, I don't think, <laughs> I don't think they are. I, I think, I think they are, you know, yeah. Like, no, I, I genuinely, I genuinely think they are delusional or maybe that they know it at a certain level. Mm -hmm. You know, but they don't let they don't let themselves think it or promote it, which I guess sounds like what you're saying. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. I, look, okay, yeah. I think if you gave them true serum or like you know whatever had an accurate lie detector test, and you forced them in yeah. a situation where like what's more likely, like a young girl being attracted to her older male professor or a young boy, you know, being attracted to his older female professor, like you know, say they're fifty or whatever. Uh, I think they know the truth, right? Well, which is why it was even a possibility that the girl liked Bill, right? So the fact that she, there was a possibility she liked him and like you were supposed to think that <laughs> is, I think, acknowledgement to reality. You don't see yeah. that with uh, with Sandra O. Oh. You don't see men, you know, young boys, uh, twenty year olds, you know, pi pining after her. Uh, 
So I think you're right. Well, then there was that, that, and, and I think this was a, a sort of feminist scene too, where Sandra O oh and the, the elderly female professor are in the weight room. I don't know. It was like the lacrosse team or something, but all the young guys like lifting weights, yes, and like, yes, that was, you that know, getting like pumped up. Yes. And they were both like, I don't know, eating ice cream with their mouths agape, like, Oh wow, this is, this is great. And, uh, but, but yeah, like none of those guys like hit on her, you know, like I think, a, a, you know, a different kind of show would have had like one of those guys, like, you know, whatever hit on Sandra. Oh, really? or yeah, like, Sandra, not, you know. the, not the old one. I don't think not, not the old one. You know, <laughs> like, like, would, would it, you know, it would have been within, within the realm of, of imagination, I suppose. Yeah. Um, and like, and yeah, you know, the, had that. yeah. And the sex is reversed is like, it, it's funny because this is like a double standards acknowledge, like Bill can't be looking at, you know, ogling the, the girls, right. The undergrad girls. Um, but they could do it to the best. He's a sympathetic character. Yeah, 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 yeah. And so, no, no sympathetic character can do that. But the girl, the women can do it to the men. So there is like an acknowledgement of human nature and like an inversion of like reality, sort of like that. And that, like you know, old women are like ogling men for their bodies, which is less common than than the opposite. Um, so yeah, it, it's it, another I mean, unrealistic thing when that yeah. girl came to Bill's house. I can't remember the the young female undergrad who came to Bill's house. Right. She, you know, she wanted him to give her notes on on a book manuscript and uh-huh. she had paper. You know, she like had this like big stack of paper and had it to it. I'm like, who, who like what like 19 year old in 2021 like prints out 300 pages and like hand delivers it to the professor's house. Uh-huh. Like in the real world, it would be like email, right? It would be emails, it would be PDFs. Well, it would be like you don't know, like like show up unannounced. I don't even think she called. Um, like like she just like Bill didn't expect her to show up, right? And so it was just a weird thing that like she prints out this manuscript, shows up at his house, and there's no um, like like we're just supposed to believe that she's not interested in him. Like clearly, it, to me, it looked like an excuse for her to like talk to him and like be around yeah. him. Well, yeah. I mean, if you're trying to get a reference, you you know, for something, you might try to do it in person. And to do that, yeah. you might have to bring in. Some people don't like to read long, you know, yeah, as a courtesy. Like some people don't like to read hundred pages or whatever uh, That's true. Uh, uh, online. Yeah, on so you screen, might have a courtesy yeah. not make him print it. You know, you want him to read it, so you, you'd bring it to him by hand. Um, okay, that makes sense. Yeah, I don't think. Yeah, I I, I understand that interpretation that she uh, really was attracted to him or like is in denial about it. You know, shows are like they have different levels of complexity. And sometimes like you're watching a show and like, you know, this one, like you give it the benefit of the doubt or like, oh, maybe I'm giving this show too much credit. I think this is one of those shows where we shouldn't give it too much credit. <laughs> I think it's I think it's pretty simple. Uh, um, you don't think this is a, a sort of like prestige television, like, no, like, like yeah, uh, no, no, complex no, themes? Exactly. Yeah. The Sopranos. Right. If it's Sopranos, you know, if it's Mad Men, I mean, Breaking Bad, there's a lot going on, you know, in human nature. All the subtext. Things. Exactly. Here, it's just, it's sort of like pr- political propaganda and like, not even, you know, not even good propaganda, just like centrist liberalism, like, you know, boring, like Hamilton. Like Obama era, like, yeah, Obama era cent- cent- centrist liberalism, where like, yeah, like, yeah. Another sort thing of ordinary that, another thing that doesn't ha- actually that's interesting about like comparing it to like real life universities is like every single thing is run by like the entire department is run by the faculty right um mm. these like diversity counselors don't have much of a role there's like one white pr guy there's like a young white man who's like a pr guy who wants to write them their press releases but like that's it like in the and the, there's a title like a title line officer um and uh you know that's that's it and and there's no but like in the modern university especially with like controversies and scandals you know i think that's like totally handled by the uh bureaucracy and so it's like this sort of old idea of the university like they're you know they're teaching moby dick they're uh teaching you know uh chaucer and the faculty still run things and like the diversity bureaucrats haven't really taken over yet right so there's these these ideas that i think are just there's like an idealized image of it yeah, and this I is think like that's that sort that, of like this glamorized, idealized image. Yeah, and I think the faculty. Yeah, I mean, I've been at university. I mean, you're so over like everything you do. Like you're dealing with like you're dealing with stupid like bureaucrats all day um, who are not professors. Like if you want to get your money or you know there's an issue, you're always dealing with them, and they're not. And I think like that's maybe why. And your life is like eighty to ninety percent email, right? Like you see, om- like very little email exchange going yeah. on. Like there's a little bit of scenes here and there of them at their desk, like. Yeah. But yeah, like ninety percent of an academic's life is like on their laptop or on a computer, like going back and forth on email. 
and writing and research and whatever. And like a lot of this is just sort of like dealing with politics, dealing with romance, which I guess is more fun. Like who wants to see like a bunch of academics on their computers all day? Um, and I think this is yeah. why academics liked it. I mean, that they, it's like a world where they're still in charge and all they're doing yeah. is like and teaching. It looks, I mean, it does look legitimately beautiful, right? Like a lot of the, the sort of Twitter snark and stuff was about like how beautiful Sandra O's office is and how like the the desks and the, the wood paneling and whatever, like all of this stuff. Like it, it legitimately looks like, I, I'm curious what university they filmed it at because it looks really nice. Um, but like, yeah, in the real world, it doesn't look like that. It's not that nice. It's not that clean. Like even at top universities, it's not like some, some places do kind of look like that on the inside, but you know, yeah. very few academic offices look that, that nice. Yeah, you're right. They, they are, they're the, yeah, the academics. That well lit and. It's funny yeah. because when you, because you build the, you build, they build the universities and like the Ivy leagues, like you walk around and they're beautiful, even like UCLA, um, and because they were built a long time ago and sort of like what we do on the inside and like the offices is sort of a sensibility of modern people. And yeah. it's not as beautiful. It's not as beautiful. Yeah. It looks way better, which I guess is like, you know, this is why um, if you ever take a, a campus tour of like an Ivy league school or any, any, you know, every, any flagship university, uh, the, the tour is all on the outside, right? Like they show you all the beautiful buildings yeah. and the, all the architecture, but they don't take you inside and you just see like the walls are white and like, it just looks like where you and I are sitting right now. Like, it doesn't look like, like this sort of like the grandeur yeah. of, of like, uh, of like the old world or something or like, yeah, like even uh, the University of Chicago movies. Law School and you, the law school is sort of more, you know, they have more cash and it's a good law school, obviously, than other, and even there, the offices didn't look like any, they were better than, you know, when the political science department used to like other other places I've been, you're right, but it, it's it wasn't even anything close to uh, what the, what this show had. Um, yeah. The oh, here here's an interesting thing. I don't know what to make of when she when the old woman uh, goes into the uh, Title IX office and the girl is where the girl bends over, right? The the uh, Title IX officer, and yeah. she shows her like you know she shows her her butt hanging out, and then like the old lady like yells at her. Remember that. <laughs> I, I remember, yeah. yeah. So, what is that like? Is it supposed to like? Are, are she's slut shaming her, right? Isn't isn't that slut shaming? Yeah, yeah. Well, I guess. Yeah. Well, it's interesting, right? Because like you know, the the old lady has her. She's kind of established her feminist credentials as like you know someone who was underpaid and mistreated by the department back in the day, and so she has like the authority, I guess, to like make that kind of comment, but. Yeah, that is like, like, what was the show trying to do there? You know, like, whose side was it taking? Was it taking the younger woman's side and the way she was dressed or the older woman's side who still like, has these old school ideas of like modesty and workplace professionalism? Yeah, but it reminds actually, yeah, that reminded me of something that happened at I think this was at Stanford a few years ago, there was a uh, a female undergrad, I want to say it was an undergrad, I might be getting some of the details off, but like this, this female undergrad, um, a, a, a Stanford female professor, uh, basically told her to like, n like dress more modestly or more professionally, something like yeah. that. Cause I guess the girl was wearing really short shorts. And so the female professor said like, you know, dress more modestly. And then later when that, that like, so then this student like launched this, you know, this sort of like activist campaign saying like, you know, Oh, the faculty at Stanford are trying to tell me how to dress and all this stuff. And she gave, uh, she had to do an oral presentation of her bachelor's thesis and she stripped uh, completely naked. You I might remember have heard about there, this. Yeah, the video was all, I don't know if she was, was she yeah. naked or she was in her underwear? I, I remember maybe just that. in her underwear, but like it was like, you know, ago, her yeah. sort of like performance art of like protesting the misogyny and the patriarchy and whatever. But it was a female, like an older female professor who like gave this advice to her of like, you know, hey, you should dress more modestly when you give yeah. presentations so or whatever. That's another way where it's like a little bit, the show is a little bit more moderate. You don't have the gender fluidity. You don't have like, you know, like sex work is real work. <laughs> when is, uh, yeah, like one of the characters is going to have an OnlyFans. Yeah. Yeah. Know? The fact that like you're supposed to sympathize with the old feminist, uh, you know, the old feminist woman, the fact that that mm. doesn't make her like a... Uh, like An a evil person that or something, right? Yeah, yeah that's over. So there's these, yeah, there's all these gender double standards that they they accept. But like really being woke, I think when you get to the end of woke, the end tale of wokeness, even a woman can't say that to another woman. Nobody can say that because you know you can never tell a woman how to dress or how to act. Yeah. Her, so right? so it makes me wonder like who's the audience for this show then? Because like like I guess the audience can't be like hardcore like like twenty year old college graduate or college student activists, yeah. right? Like the, the show is aimed at like 
the sort of middle of the road, like, like, yeah. I guess like academics, right? Like yeah, PhD the students, on Twitter, exactly. Yeah. Uh, professors, like people who are sort of like, like on the left, but they're not like, you know, they're not activist types. And then, so I guess this show does sort of like, in, in a way it's a, a glimpse into the way that they view the world, I guess in the same way that Hamilton was this glimpse of like, you know, respect for the old ways, but also like, you know, thinking that whatever, it's cool to like update it a little bit. Um, yeah, Hamilton yeah. Is so, yeah, Hamilton is so dated because I mean, just because it celebrates uh, the founding fathers, which like 10 years ago, you couldn't just have like a hit about the founding fathers. You had to make them all black and give women uh, half the time. Right. Um, <laughs> but still, you could still do it's still the founding fathers. It's not 1619. It's still, you know, 1776. Um, and now you can't. Yeah, Hamilton is that. passe now. Yeah. So, but, but yeah, the show, the show's attitudes about women and how how people dress and whatever like it it's not it, it doesn't show it as passe right it, like you said it takes it, it more i think takes the side of the older woman like that old school feminism um and it doesn't view her as like her attitudes as vulgar or passe or some like you know the the the, yeah. the opinions of a reactionary dinosaur it's like you know oh like she's she's sort of like the the she's against share her viewpoint yeah. it's okay yeah. it's okay to share those beliefs it's exactly. sort of telling you what it's okay yeah. to believe and the, yeah, and the, and the sex double standards, the fact that, you know, I say like Bill couldn't say that it's sort of a, um, it's sort of, yeah, that double standard itself is sort of. Wait, what, what's, what's the double standard? Well, the double standards if like Bill commented on the woman and the little, on the young girl's uh, uh, dress or the way she was mm. dressed, uh, that wouldn't have been acceptable, right? Obviously, oh, absolutely but, not. Yeah. yeah. And so you have this double standard. And so it's, it's like this, yeah, it is, that is like. Yeah, I mean, so liberalism, I mean, has these double standards based on gender. I think when you get woke enough, it's like you know, you you start to eliminate the double standards just because the 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 requirements on everybody are so stringent. Like nobody can say anything. Like nobody can judge a woman for how she dressed. Nobody can like say prostitution is bad or like uh, you know could make it could make could make a you know uh, any kind of any kind of ridicule or criticism about any choice. Uh, it's totally taboo woman, yeah. relating to sex yeah and so and so that's like that makes it more equal because you know women can be canceled and, and men can be canceled while here um <laughs> you know they still sort of acknowledge men and women are different so women can sort of get away with the things uh that men cannot right yeah 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 that'd be, yeah i guess that's that's about right yeah so, so the attitudes about so one thing that hasn't that, that was never commented on in the show you and I haven't talked about it and I haven't seen it really mentioned anywhere is um, and, and maybe that's, that's that in itself is interesting is that it's been sort of uh, overlooked is that Sandra O oh is a, you know, she's a Korean American woman and her love interest is a white guy. Yes. And, yeah, and it's that's... never brought up. It's never seen as um, anything yeah. worth commenting on. Right. That like, she's, she likes this sort of white guy. He's interested in her. Like, you know, he's not accused of having yellow fever or whatever. And her she's dad not is accused like, of. Could have married whatever. What was his name? Peter Chung or something? He like yeah, said yeah, an yeah, Asian yeah. guy's name. But even like, the the grandparent doesn't say like you know why do you have to marry this white guy? You know, like it's just not uh, not commented on. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, it's, Asian men are completely invisible. You're right. Uh, yeah. uh, well, I didn't, I didn't. I wasn't even mentioning the Asian man thing, but like, yeah, I guess that, that's well. It's not a single Asian. Father, man. You know, no, 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 that's not true. Her father. Her oh yeah, is... yes. Okay, there's an old dinosaur who's, who's yeah, yeah, yeah. Going on. Oh, by the way, the, Asian, the 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 father. I thought it was funny when he was wearing the Mexican outfit. I thought that was some real cultural appropriation. There was nothing like uh, that. Yeah. I that was funny. He walks around in like a sombrero and like a Mexican outfit when he's with the little girl. Um, anyway, but yeah, looks good. The yeah, you're right. It's like, but no one, yeah, no. So why is like, I guess like one, like, is it interesting? And like, why has no one commented on? It? Is it because we're so used to seeing the sort of white male asian female couplings yeah. that it's not even it doesn't register especially at universities man like you know top universities it's not at all or any university i guess like it's not unusual to see um you know white white asian couplings like that um no it's it's the where it's not it's even worthy norm. of comment yeah it's the norm and it's not even uh yeah it's not worthy of comment you're right but it's interesting why it's not worthy of comment um mm. because yeah, like, I mean, you sometimes see these articles by, like, these Asian guys in, like, uh, you know, like, New York Times or Atlantic or whatever, and it's, like, they're trying to claim their own victimhood, and the victimhood is always on the lines of, like, they're, we're stereotyped, we're seen as not attractive to women, we are, uh, you know, we're invisible, like, nobody cares about us, and, like, they write these articles and, like, 
they, it proves they're right. They are invisible because like nobody like pays attention. No to one them. cares. And like even Asian yeah, yeah. women, when they go to the media and they talk about being fetishized and exoticized, uh, that gets more attention. And it's like Asian women have like the better, or the Asian men have the better argument if you're like objectively like who women are like responding to on like OK Cupid, right? But it's it's not objective. It's just like Asian women are so privileged, but they also get to be women that it's like yeah, yeah. It's like everyone. Is well, yeah, I mean, so so in a way, you get sort of like the benefit of being desired and, and being the victim yeah, and being the I, victim. yeah. <laughs> whereas like yeah asian guys yeah, yeah. although like yeah, I, so yeah, I, I wonder like yeah are they going to do anything with that like the show never commented on it even the, like i would have expected you know the grandparents or the sandro's parents to say something like you know like oh you know why are you dating this white guy or like whatever like no, nothing like that and so so yeah it's just a it's such a like a an established part of of like uh, the educated class is to see like Asian women dating white guys. Yeah. Um, and yeah, not really. I mean, maybe we'll see later, like, uh, you know, cause, cause I doubt they're going to stay together. Right. The way TV shows tend to work is like, you have like so many romantic interests and so many, cause that's a, an easy way to introduce friction and drama into shows. Yeah. Um, but maybe, yeah, maybe we'll see some, some, uh, some other, other people like introduced into to the love triangles or whatever. Yeah. Um, I remember so like, this scene from uh, the social network, like, you know, the Zuckerberg guy and his friends, the, like they're, they're sort of in this Jewish frat and they make this joke of like, you know, so, something along the lines of like, if it wasn't for Asian women, like none of us would have girlfriends or something like that. That's fine. And, uh, and I wonder like if that was like a sort of like a, this acknowledgement of like, yeah, like Asian women, like these sort of nerdy white guy types, which I guess Bill is like an archetypal kind of like quirky quirky professorial kind of guy uh you know semi good looking he's got the rugged beard and i mean he talks with a like a so, sort of a lisp so he's a little bit effeminate like he's clearly not like a manly man by any stretch but mm. you know i guess he has like this sort of like you know like nerdiness mixed with like a little bit of of uh i don't know bad boyish vibes or something yeah that's yeah because oh, he's smoking weed there was a scene where he was smoking weed and the Sandro was like, "Oh, you know, smoking weed. You got the five o'clock shadow. You think you're so cool, whatever." So he's like trying to put on this this air of being like a cool professor. Yeah, right. Yeah, the yeah the the you know the joking about the yeah the the guys with the nerds with the Asian girlfriends. It sort of like reminds me of Jewish jokes. Like you could make Jewish jokes that are so, all, so sort of self deprecating. This is the white adjacent, I think thing. Um, it's not that <laughs> serious. Every. Every stereotype or like, uh, you know, uh, uh, kind of like double standard or whatever applied to black people is like a path to genocide, sort of. It's, it's like that. It's like you have to be very careful. Um, but, well, that's not always true. Like you could have like, oh, my crazy grandma, you know, you could have a, like a black character, you know, do that. And it's like funny and it's like outgoing and it's cool. But anything that's along the lines of like, that's really self-deprecating, like you know, anything that would be like a negative stereotype is too serious, I think, to even joke about um, in places like this. Oh, yeah. This is not a, yeah, this is not a, but you could do that with like Jewish people. Um, and with Asians, you could do that too. You can do like, you know, the stuff like, I'm an, you know, I'm sort of a nerd or whatever, or like, you know, I I, I am, you know, I am a perfectionist. Like you have these things that are like sort of flaws uh, that are stereotypes. Well, there was that famous, uh, like they tried to create a controversy out of, uh, during the, the Democrat debates, I think this was 2020. Andrew Yang? Uh, Andrew Yang said like, you know, and, and I'm Asian and I know a lot of doctors. You know, he had this sort of like one-liner in one yeah. of the debates. He said it as like kind of a joke, self-deprecating joke. Yeah. And I think like Vox and like, you know, all these sort of like left leaning outlets was like, it was Andrew Yang's joke too. Did he go too far? <laughs> or like, you know, and, and like, I think most, like he, he got a laugh out of the crowd when he said it and yeah. like, it was okay. Right. And so like, no one really cared. Yeah. Um, uh, yeah. That's the, that's the, diff- that's the radical, like sort of moderate split, right? Mm-hmm. The show was for moderates. For the moderates. Yeah. So you can yeah. make a joke like, like you can have an Asian character, like, you know, say something like, oh, I'm Asian. I know doctors. And like, it, it would, it would be played as a joke rather than as an outrage. Yeah. In, in this show, I think. I think you're right there. Yeah. Exactly. Um, but yeah, okay. I guess they couldn't, uh, yeah, there couldn't be any critiques of, of black people or, I don't know, Muslims, probably not. Like there are certain yeah. groups where you just cannot, uh, yeah, you, it's too, it's too radioactive. You negative, yeah. You can't do a negative stereotype. Yeah. The, uh, yeah. Yeah. So are you looking forward to season two? If and when it comes? I don't know. I think I'll wait. I'll hold off. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not looking forward to it. 
<laughs> at all, really. We'll see if it uh, becomes a. If, but I, I liked. I guess the only thing I really liked about the show was that it gave it gave you like a glimpse into like sort of like what, what's going on with like moderate moderate liberals and the way yes, they view the world that. and how I they want it to be. A glimpse into what's going on. Have you ever seen a million little things? I haven't. It is the. It is the most cringe. I, I can't believe how cringe it is. It is. It's like it's like the, you know if you think like. This is like over here. Like this is like the Tiger Woods of cringe. I mean, every oh, every character is like it's something. Like there's an Asian character, and like they're victim of a hate crime. And there's a black character. He's like stereotyped. And like then there's like a, a gay character. He suffers some. It's like every single and like they're just giving each other speeches about like how difficult their lives are. And like every I single thing is it. like every cliche taken from like Vox from the New York Times. Just watch an episode or two. It's it's absolutely unbelievable. It's it's the, it's the cringiest thing I've ever seen. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll do. Maybe Maybe we'll do something else, but yeah, we have a couple other ideas lined up. One one movie yeah. that I'm looking forward to is uh, the Sopranos prequel. Um, when's that? When's Saints that of Newark, out? October first. I think it's October first is the 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 release date. So we'll have to we'll have to talk about that one at some point. Yeah, that'll be um, fun. I mean, if we, if we have to go to a movie theater, I don't know if I can. Uh, I don't know if even movie <laughs> theaters are open around here. I, I don't know. It, 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 is all, all the theaters shut down in LA? I, I haven't tried to go to one. I don't know because I know there's a it's movie probably not. Movie. Yeah, might not be wise. Yeah, I don't know. They might have been like, oh, got out of business, but uh, okay. Yeah, well, I think yeah. I think that's I think we've said you know everything there is about the chair. You know, I'll look. I'll look. Yeah. I'll, I wish I would have read some of the reviews before this because I'm interested in like seeing how, um, you know how how sort of uh, people have reacted to it and whether they like notice the things we noticed. I but think maybe they liked maybe... it. I saw this. I saw one in the Atlantic. I didn't read it. But I just read the headline, and it was like. Uh, the chair is Netflix's best show in years, or oh something god, like that. Really? Yeah. These so I think. Oh my god. So you know, if that's the Atlantic, then you can kind of get a sense of like, you know, this is this is like the iconic kind of like here's where like like review? moderate like liberals are. In, in, in I saw the link to the Slate review. Did you look at it? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I read. I think I read most of that one, the one that I posted. Uh, it was, thing? you know, it was kind of silly, but I, I like that it sort of it was self aware enough to like discuss the kind of like uh, the backbiting that goes on in academia, um, mm-hmm. which I guess the show sh- showed a little bit of that. But anyway, yeah. yeah. I think that's true. It did it did portray them all as a bunch of cowards, which I think is one. No one came to Bill's defense, right? Like when Bill was getting <laughs> mobbed. There's a lot of spinelessness, which was, yeah. yeah, that was accurate. Okay. Well, well this was well, this was fun. And yeah, uh, yeah Rob, well, until next time. All right. Sounds good. Take care, Richard. Bye.